Nine Jam quarterback for Andrew Jones, presented by Jim Johns of Lightfoot. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Joyce. Welcome to week five of Armchair Quarterback presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches. Armchair Quarterback is a weekly high school and college football show spotlighting local high school and college football in the mountains. Tonight we'll have a complete recap of last week's high school football from around the region. Top individual performances, upsets and blowouts this edition of Armchair Quarterback will include highlights from Shelby Valley and Morgan County, Pike Central and Letcher Central, Belfry and Pikeville, Prestonsburg and Floyd Central. Also tonight, we'll unveil the Super 7 rankings and the week's AP rankings. College football, the Cats are 3-0, and and the Bears had a record-breaking home opener Saturday. We've got a lot to get to. First, let's take a look at last week's results. We saw some incredible action, including old rivals getting together and new rivalries just getting started. It was Belfry, big winners over Pikeville, 49-13. Eastridge defeated Sheldon Clark, 26-14. It was Greenup County knocking off Lawrence County, 38-14. Harlan rolled over McGoffin County, 44-12. It was Johnson Central, 42-8 winners over Moore. Lynn Camp defeated Jenkins 47-8. It was Paintsville, 53-21 winners over Williamsburg. Pike Central held off Letcher Central, 35-28. Prestonsburg all over Floyd Central, 42-22. It was Shelby Valley rolling to a 55-36 win over Morgan County. And Tug Valley defeated Phelps, 20-7, the final score. Last week on the field, there were several big performances individually. This week's top performers, how about Mingo Central as a team, an 18-game win streak. For Mingo Central, Dawson Eli, 351 total yards of offense, five touchdowns. Jeremy Dillon had 294 total yards and five touchdowns. Pike Central on the defensive side, Logan Hillerman, 20 tackles. Isaac Thacker rushed for 149 and two scores. How about it, Shelby Valley, Seth Johnson, 351 yards on the ground, five touchdowns. Toby Hall had 13 tackles, Logan Billiter, 10 tackles to lead Shelby Valley. Paintsville's Tyrese Allen ran for 151 yards and two touchdowns. Prestonsburg's Ethan Varney, 203 yards rushing on the ground. Ryan Sloan, 121 and 10 tackles. Blake Sloan also had 10 tackles in the Black Cats win over the Jaguars. For Floyd Central defensively, Ethan Howard, 16 tackles. Dustin Huff added 13. Does anyone play defense anymore? Last week, there were 19 teams in the state scoring 50 or more. In some cases, neither team played much D. There were combined scores of 110. That's right, 66-46. 95 combined points, 70-25 matchup. How about 55-36 and 49-41? Don't get me wrong, there were some close games too. 24 games statewide decided by one score or less. The lowest winning score of the week, Bourbon County over Rowan County, 12-7. Let's get to the highlights. For the first time ever, the Floyd Central Jaguars welcome county rival Prestonsburg to Floyd Central in what's sure to be a tremendous rivalry. The Jags off to a 4-0 and start. The crowd rolling in early for this one in anticipation. The Black Cats got the ball moving early. Drake Nunnery gives it to Ryan Sloan. He'll run over a defender and finishes with authority. That play set up this touchdown run by Ethan Varney. He takes it into the end zone untouched. The Jaguars in the red zone now looking to answer around the end and out of the crowd. The ball pops straight up. Both teams scramble, but Prestonsburg will come out with the football. Again, Floyd Central will be looking to score. This time, Dylan Cottle drops back, quickly throws the jump ball. Brady Kahn comes down with it for the touchdown. But the Jags would come up short. Prestonsburg, 42-22 winners over Floyd Central. Next up, Pike Central is at Floyd Central. Hazard visits Prestonsburg. Stay tuned, coming up. Many more highlights and this week's AP and Sports Guys Super 7 rankings. 
We'll talk U Pike football, UK, and more. It's Armchair Quarterback, presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches in the Pikeville Commons. Jimmy, and this has been my definition of fresh since 1983. The good folks at Howard Family Pharmacy grew up right here in Eastern Kentucky. They know this town just as well as they know their customers. You want to be greeted by a friend and a pharmacist you know and trust. Come see Wes Howard, Tiffany Jacobs, and Lauren Mullins at Howard Family Pharmacy. Located at Eastern, near Allen Central High School. Call or visit HowardFamilyPharmacy.com. Most insurance plans are accepted. Late hours and open on Saturday, too. Howard Family Pharmacy. If you're looking for a fun, safe, friendly atmosphere to achieve your fitness goals, be sure to check out Heavenly Strong, a Christian fitness group that supports your physical and spiritual journey to wellness. Call 606-434-9914 for more information. No matter where you are on your journey to physical and spiritual wellness, Heavenly Strong is here for you. It's the high school football game of the week, presented by Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, and the Golden Corral Restaurant in Pikeville. This week, the Betsy Lane Bobcats travel across county lines to take on the Shelby Valley Wildcats. The game of the week airs Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 4 and 8.30, only on EKB-TV. Welcome back. More highlights from last weekend's high school football. Friday night, the 57th meeting between Pikeville and Belfry on the gridiron. This one was a blowout at the get-go with the Pirates scoring you know, the early middle, and often. And the from their own territory, the Derek Wellman takes the handoff straight up the gut. You'll find an opening, makes guys miss an open field, outruns everyone to the end zone. 60 yards plus for the Pirate touchdown. Pikeville now looking to answer. Peyton Boyd Blair looks for the slant route, but Justin Adkins does what he does. Jumps the pass for the interception down the sideline. Touchdown, Pirates, a pick six by Adkins. Belfry ran the ball well all night. This time Kevin Browning drops back and he'll toss to Colston Blankenship. Makes the fingertip catch and down the field for a 35 yard gain. That play led to a trip to the red zone. Devin Varney takes the give. He'll cut up field and into the end zone. The Pirates go on to win big at KM Stadium. 49-13, Belfry wins it. Next up, Pikeville is open. Sheldon Clark will be at Belfry. And the Shelby Valley Wildcats hosted Morgan County Friday night at Tico Field. It would be a huge night for the Cats with nearly 500 yards of total offense. Valley had a huge night on the ground. Seth Johnson played a huge role. He'll take the handoff right up the middle into the end zone, six points for Valley, and that was just getting started. Again, Johnson takes the handoff. He'll spin, make a few defenders miss, finds open field, and off to the races, Seth Johnson, six more. He finished the night with 351 yards rushing on 20 carries, and Seth Johnson finished with five touchdowns. Shelby Valley 55, Morgan County 36. Next up, Estill County is at Morgan County. Betsy Lane visits Shelby Valley for our EKB TV game of the week. And Friday, the Mingo Central Miners were hosting Sissonville at Buck Harless Stadium, a showdown between two West Virginia AA top fives. The Miners in the red zone early. Jeremy Dillon takes the snap, fakes the handoff. He'll keep it himself and into the end zone. Touchdown, Miners. This time, Dillon takes the snap, play action pass. He finds Connor Thacker wide open. He's brought down at the 10. That play set up this touchdown run. Dillon fakes the give, does it himself, got a block on the corner. 
He punches it in for six. Again, Dylan takes his snap. He had a huge night. Play action. He'll find Josh Reed open over the middle. It's a foot race to the end zone. One man to beat. He outruns everyone. Another Miners touchdown. Jeremy Dillon had a big, big night. Another play action pass. This time he finds Dawson Eli with the screen pass. He'll do the rest of the work. Breaking tackles. He'll find the end zone all alone. And the Miners win big at home. Mingo Central 69, Sissonville 15. An 18 game win streak now for the Miners. For Mingo Central, Dawson Eli, 351 yards total offense and five touchdowns. Jeremy Dillon, 294 total offense and five touchdowns. Next up, the Polka Dots are at Mingo Central. And Pike Central got home to Buckley's Creek with a two and one record. Earlier, I spoke with Hawks head man, Eric Ratliff, and his thoughts on his team's start. Well, you know, I think we're we're probably where we thought we was going to be. We're a little bit behind defensively, which seems like on the hill it's, it's been tough defensively up there uh, for years. But we're working hard. We're uh, we're getting better. Uh, the big thing is we got to tackle better uh, in space, which is always an athlete problem. But uh, like I said, our kids are working hard. We're offensively, I think we're ab ab probably above where we was, was going to be. We need to work on a passing game. Everybody says you got to throw it, but you know me, I, I like to run the football and pass when I want to, and I don't really want to a lot. But uh, you know. Uh, we got to stay healthy, which is a big key, and, and just work defensively, get better and better. And, and my thing is, you got to be good up front, and that's what we're working on. Offensive line, defense line's got to be good, and we really work on those guys. Emphasize what we need to do: staying on blocks and getting off blocks. Let's take a look at the highlights at Buckley's Creek Friday night: Pike Central and Letcher Central at the Hawks Nest. First, Letcher Cougar quarterback Nick Surgeon drops. He'll fire over the middle. This one picked off by Pike Central Seth Kahn. He'll make defenders miss, then finds an opening, and up the sideline he goes. Seth Kahn off to the races. Touchdown Hawks early in this one. Kahn knows how to find the end zone. Pike Central looking to score again. Kahn hands off this time to Isaac Thacker. He'll find the opening and into the end zone for another Pike Central touchdown. Letcher Central gets the ball, and again, Surgeon drops back. He'll find Hunter Campbell this time. Gets out on the corner, and then outruns everyone to the end zone. It's not enough, though. The Cougars will come up short in this one. The Hawks soar, 35-28 over Letcher Central. Next up, Perry Central is at Letcher Central. Pike Central visits Floyd Central. I asked Coach Eric Ratliff uh, about his running game. Con, Thacker, Hess, and company. What makes your ground game so strong? You know, we got uh, four seniors up front. A couple of sophomores have been playing up there, and, and uh, they've been doing a really, really good job. And, and the big thing we've done is we simplified our scheme. And don't forget Isaiah Hess, who's uh, he's an inside runner, a little 165-pound guy in there. And uh, they complement each other. We got the inside runner. We got Seth, who's uh, uh, you know he'll take a, a, a just off tackle play and make it go 70 yards. And then Isaac Thacker's our speed guy on the outside. So each, all three complement each other, and it makes our offense go the way it is. Coach, you played for Jack Hall, who was a notorious side saddle tee or single wing offensive guy. We've seen your Hawks in a similar look. How intentional is that? We could say, I guess old times would say we're in a single wing. Uh, we got Seth back there at shotgun. We got to block him back. Uh, we got a wing back. We're unbalanced. So if uh, you turned the clock back about 30 years when we were playing, Andrew, I did. Uh, you would see uh, some of, of Coach Hall's stuff. We're just not in the side saddle. And then we'll get into a wildcat. You've seen us do that. And we've got a few more form formations that we haven't seen yet. And uh, so, uh, but, you know, we're a, we're a single wing team, what you might say, uh, in a shotgun, letting Seth do his thing back there. This week you have Floyd Central, a district opponent. What can we expect to see? You know, I think it'll uh, it'll come down to uh, turnovers. It'll come down to uh, possession of the football. Uh, who takes care of the ball the best and who also controls the chains, controls the clock. Uh, they like to run the football and throw when they want to. And we do the same. Uh, they got good athletes. Uh, the quarterback's a really nice player. Uh, one of the running backs is, is uh, second or third in the state in rushing. And they're big up front. Uh, defensively, they're aggressive. Looks like Sean always knew we would be. Uh, they play a 50 like us. So it, it's, they're a mirror image. They're just doing it a little bit out of a wishbone and stuff, and we're doing that with single wing type stuff. That's Pike Central head coach Eric Ratliff, an important district game this Friday at Floyd Central. 
Stay tuned. Coming up, many more highlights and this week's AP and Sports Guys Super 7 rankings. We talk U-Pike, we talk UK, and more. Armchair Quarterback presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches, Mike Phil Commons. Jimmy, and this has been my definition of fresh since 1983. If you're looking for a fun, safe, friendly atmosphere to achieve your fitness goals, be sure to check out Heavenly Strong, a Christian fitness group that supports your physical and spiritual journey to wellness. Call 606-434-9914 for more information. No matter where you are on your journey to physical and spiritual wellness, Heavenly Strong is here for you. The good folks at Howard Family Pharmacy grew up right here in Eastern Kentucky. They know this town just as well as they know their customers. You want to be greeted by a friend and a pharmacist you know and trust. Come see Wes Howard, Tiffany Jacobs, and Lauren Mullins at Howard Family Pharmacy. Located at Eastern, near Allen Central High School. Call or visit HowardFamilyPharmacy.com. Most insurance plans are accepted. Late hours and open on Saturday, too. Howard Family Pharmacy. Jimmy, and this has been my definition of fresh since 1983. There's a full slate of high school football this weekend, and it's the first week of district play as well. Let's take a look at this week's schedule for Friday, September 22nd. Sheldon Clark will be at Belfry. You'll hear it on 93.1 WDHR. Leslie County goes to East Ridge. Pike Central is at Floyd Central. Coverage on The Rock, 103.1 FM. Harlan visits Jenkins. Boyd County is at Johnson Central. Breathitt County visits Knott Central. Paysville is at Lawrence County. Perry Central goes to Letcher Central. McGoffin County at Powell County. Hazard at Prestonsburg. And Betsy Lane will be at Shelby Valley. Coverage on ESPN East Kentucky, and it's the EKB TV Game of the Week. The Associated Press released its weekly Kentucky High School Football Rankings Monday. Twelve coverage area teams received mention and three number ones. In Kentucky Class Single A, it's Paintsville at number one, followed by Beachwood, then Country Day, Raceland fourth and Hazard fifth, Pikeville still in the top ten at number seven, and the Phelps Hornets received votes. In AA, it's Mayfield, Danville, DeSales, Lexington Christian, and Christian Academy of Louisville. Receiving votes outside the top 10, Eastridge and Prestonsburg. In AAA, it's the Belfry Pirates, number one. Then Corbin, Boyle County, Louisville Central 4th, and E-Town 5th. Receiving votes, Floyd Central, Knott Central, and Pike Central. Kentucky Class 4A has Johnson Central in the top spot. Then Rockcastle County, Wayne County, Collins, and Shelby County. In Kentucky Class 5A, it's Covcath, Bowling Green, and Christian County. From the mountains, Perry Central at number 6. In 6A, it's Trinity, then St. X, PRP, Mail, and Simon Kenton. And the sports guys of EKB released their Super 7 high school football rankings for the week. The Super 7 includes the top seven teams in our coverage area, regardless of state or class. The Super 7 rankings for September 18th, receiving votes, Phelps and Prestonsburg at number 7, Pike Central, Pikeville's Panthers at 6, Paintsville's Tigers at number 5, the Hazard Bulldogs 4th, Mingo Central's Miners at number 3, the Belfry Pirates 2nd, and unanimous number 1, Johnson Central's Golden Eagles. 
Stay tuned. Coming up, more highlights. This week's college football. We'll talk to you, Pike. We'll talk UK. It's Armchair Quarterback, presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches, Pike Bill Commons. This has been my definition of fresh since 1983. It's the high school football game of the week presented by Paul Howard Jr. Attorney at Law and the Golden Corral Restaurant in Pikeville. This week, the Betsy Lane Bobcats travel across county lines to take on the Shelby Valley Wildcats. The game of the week airs Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 4 and 8.30, only on EKB-TV. Eastern Kentucky, beautiful, green, peaceful, friendly. But there's a darker side to these mountains. When crime is committed, sometimes cases go unsolved. Occasionally, the perpetrators even get away with murder. On our latest news segment, The Scene of the Crime, I'll be working with local law enforcement to help find justice for victims and their families. The Scene of the Crime, Fridays during the EKB News at 6 and 10, starting August 25th. The University of Pikeville Bears faced Kentucky Christian in their home opener Saturday at the Hamley Complex. It was an eventful and historic day for the Bears, scoring 70 points, setting a new program record for points in a game, beating the old record of 63 set in 2011. Ramon Morris tied a program record with three picks on the day. He also set a new record when one of those interceptions went for a 100-yard touchdown return. Sonny Warren and Bowen Smith combined for two passing touchdowns. Willie McLeod, Andre Willis, and Tellus Kennedy all scored once on the ground. Record-breaking day at Hillard Howard Field. Upike 70, Kentucky Christian 28. UPike's Ramon Morris was named National Defensive Player of the Week for his three interceptions, two return for touchdowns. Next up, Ave Maria University of Florida is at UPike Friday night, a 7 p.m. kickoff. I spoke to Coach Al Holland with his thoughts on the Bears' first win of the season. I feel like it's a blessing for us to get that off week, uh, maybe a couple weeks early, uh, to get some guys healed up, to, to get back to working on some fundamentals. Uh, but it was uh, great getting getting back out there and practicing, and really proud of our team and proud of our coaching staff putting our guys in position to give them an opportunity to be successful out there on the field. And uh, you know, the, and the guys are buying in, and, and that's what it's all about. You know, we got a great group of young men, I love them to death, and uh, they're great to coach and fun to coach every single day. And that makes that's what makes my job easy, coming to work every day. Uh, you know, win or lose, they're, they're putting it all out there and giving it all. And when you work hard, great things will happen. The Bears kick off Friday night. That's right, Friday at 7 at the Hambly Complex. Ave Maria 1-1, one one, Upike 1-2. One and, and the Kentucky Wildcats on the road facing South Carolina last Saturday night in Columbia. After the Gamecocks jumped in front early, Kentucky looking to answer Benny Snell from the Wildcat formation. He'll punch it in for six. Touchdown, Kentucky. We'll see the Wildcat formation again. Benny Snell takes the high snap straight up the gut for six more. We've seen the offense produce. Now the defense for a, looking for a big fourth and goal stop, and there it is. Derek Beatty wraps him up and forces the turnover on downs. 
Last chance for the Gamecocks. They're driving, looking for six. The throw, who else? Derek Beatty comes up with the interception. Gets the Wildcats the ball back and secures the Kentucky win. 23-13 over South Carolina. Next up, the Florida Gators at Kroger Field in Lexington, Saturday night at 7.30. And while the Kentucky Wildcats got a rare SEC win on the road last Saturday, Kentucky junior cornerback Derek Beatty accounted for three takeaways, including two interceptions and two fourth and one stops, earning himself SEC Defensive Player of the Week. UK senior kicker Austin McGinnis kicked three field goals. He was named SEC Special Teams Player of the Week. I was pleased with our team's performance this past week. I thought we played exceptionally hard. Uh, I thought they showed great poise, uh, great toughness, and we really executed very well in critical situations in, in, a, in a tough, hostile environment. I really believe that was the difference in the game. Uh, short yardage, goal line, third downs, uh, our team did some good things. So uh, we're excited about that win, and uh, we're we're excited to get back to work. It's very short-lived, and we'll have our hands full this week, and we're excited to be back home and, and playing a great Florida team, so we'll be excited and ready to go. With the Cats hosting Florida at Kroger Field in Lexington Saturday night, UK officials have announced that game is sold out. Only a few single tickets available. UK will try to snap a 30-year losing streak to the Gators. Florida is a two-and-a-half point favorite. Well, another week has come and gone. Now we prepare for another huge weekend of high school and college football. There are some great matchups this week. Will the undefeated remain unbeaten? Will the winless find their first win as teams begin district play? We'll find out all those answers. It's the, it's the U Pike Bears Friday night kickoff. We look forward to a great weekend of football and bringing you the recap next week on Armchair Quarterback. It's been presented by Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches in the, the Pikeville Commons. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Armchair Quarterback with Andrew Joyce, presented by Jimmy Johns of Pike.